Hello and welcome to the tutorial for the ukulele play along of Speechless, which is from the 2019 movie Aladdin and performed by Naomi Scott. If you wouldn't mind, it'd be great if you could hit subscribe to this new channel, which is a sister channel to the ukulele video play along channel. Let me introduce you to the ukulele I'll be using for this tutorial video. This is my Flight TUS 35 travel ukulele. It's a soprano sized ukulele. It has a plastic ABS body, neck, and fretboard. It has a, I think it's basswood, soundboard, as well as a little cover plate in a very lightly stained, very porous stained finish and metal tuners. It also, if you notice up here, it has a zero fret so that intonation is always right. So there's the nut there that's just there and then the actual zero fret right there that keeps that distance perfect all the time. It's very loud and surprisingly a friend of mine has a magic fluke and we play them together and they sounded eerily similar even though they have different body styles completely. So it's a very nice ukulele. No, this is not a sponsored video, but I always like to talk about the ukulele I'm using in a video. Let's take a look at the chords that are used in the song, as well as some strumming and some finger picking that you might want to do. Now, I think that there are nine chords in this song for standard GCEA ukulele. If you take a look at the baritone ukulele play along, I do some different chords there because of just simply the way that the instruments are strung and what chords you create in which positions. The first chord, E minor. So your first finger goes on the second fret, first string. Second finger goes on the second string, third fret. And the third finger goes on the third string, fourth fret. And you kind of create a little step there and the fourth string has no finger on it at all. That's your E minor chord. The next chord, to be honest with you, is labeled the D7. It's the Hawaiian D7. And if you know anything about the Hawaiian D7, it doesn't actually have a D in it. And that's why the chord works. It doesn't actually function as a D7 in the song. So I just want that to be clear. It more is functioning with its actual chord name, which is probably the A minor 7 no 5. But uh, for the ease of using the chord shapes that exist, with the font package that I have and for players in general, we'll just call it the D7. The first finger is going to go on the fourth string, second fret. The second finger is going to go on the second string, second fret, with a gap in between and nothing on the first string. That's the D7 chord. The next chord you're going to need is the most standard chord of all. It's the C chord. So you take your third finger, put it on the first string, third fret, C chord. The next chord that you're going to need is the D chord. And there are several ways to play D. The most standard that you'll see in the books is to play strings 4, 3, and 2 all on the second fret. The books will all show fingers 1, 2, and 3 in a row. I personally prefer a little different shape in playing D. So I put my first finger on the third string at the very, very top of the second fret. And then I put my second finger on the fourth string, a little bit lower on the second fret. And then my third finger goes on the second string on the bottom of the second fret. So it's still the same strings that are being pressed down, just it makes a little bit of a upside down V shape like a G7 chord. The next chord is the G chord. So your first finger goes on the third string, second fret. Second finger goes on the first string, second fret. And the third finger goes in between them on the second string, third fret, making a V shape. Now I'm going to skip ahead from the actual chords you will need to use for one moment. And I want to show you the next chord so that we can get to the actual chord that goes before that in progression. When I make those uh, chords you'll need to use, I try to do so in the order that they appear in the song. But in this case, let's take a look at the B chord first. The B chord is played with barring strings 1 and 2 on the 2nd fret, like that, with one finger. The 2nd finger goes down 
to the next fret, next string. So string three is played with the second finger. This becomes a little bit, again, like a stepwise approach. And then the third finger goes to the fourth string, fourth fret, like that. And ultimately, so you've got cover, strings one and two covered here, then a step, fret three, uh, and then again another step, fret four. That's the B chord. Now building off of that, if you hold that same B chord shape, the chord that you need before that is the B sus four. And what has to happen is there has to be two notes up here, and then on the fourth fret, two notes up here. Now it'd be great if you could play it that way on the ukulele, but unfortunately somebody needs to be able to strum it. And what you can hear is a suspension that wants to resolve back down to the B. So this note that would normally not be part of the B chord is going to go back up. But I've tried to, to play this a number of ways. I've tried to play it with two fingers. I don't like that. So here's what I have found that works best for me. You can do whatever you want to do, but this is what works best for me. So I build that B chord again. Then what I do is I have my pinky here, and my pinky can go right next to my third finger on that string. And then I can get the B sus4, and then to get the B chord that immediately follows, all I have to do is lift up my pinky. Here it comes, B sus4. Lift up my pinky. So that's what I would suggest that you do when you get to that B sus4 leading to the B. It's a sustained chord that resolves itself down from the fourth step of the scale down to the third. Now back to a much easier chord. This is the A minor chord, perhaps the second most easy chord to play on ukulele. Maybe even C7 is the easiest. It's one of the top five for sure. You just take your second finger, put your thumb behind the neck, Reach over to the 4th string, 2nd fret, that's your A minor chord. And the final chord that you're going to need is the B minor 7. Now, that sounds like a really hard chord, but let's think about it for a second. The C6 chord, or the A minor 7 chord, is all the strings open. If you want to play the B minor 7, all you have to do is take your finger and use a bar chord right across. So what you're going to do is put your thumb behind the neck, and position your finger in such a way that you can cover all the strings of the second fret at one time, pressing down. Now, you might have to play with that a little bit. Some suggestions for you with bar chords is you do want to make sure that you have a ukulele that has really good action. Incidentally, the flight ukulele here does. Now, I've not seen all the flights, but this one is set up very well, particularly at the nut. A lot of people buy ukuleles off of Amazon or other places, and the nut is actually rather high with the strings, making it to press down a really far distance on these first couple of frets. It's much more helpful if those are not raised so high, so that then you can press down easier. The next thing is make sure that your grooves of your finger, where your finger bends, aren't where the strings are, or else that'll be a gap for the strings not to press down. And finally, try to get as close as you can to the fret when you're doing that bar chord so that you don't have to press down as hard. And only press down as hard as you need to to get a clear sound. Now let's take a look at some strumming patterns that you're going to need in the song. And we're going to pick a pattern. And here's what I like to do often, and it works here too, is I'm going to pluck strings four and three with my thumb, string two with my first finger, and string one with my third finger. So what I do is I pluck strings four, two, and one all at the same time. And then what I'm going to do is pluck string three with my thumb, pluck string two with my first finger, and pluck string one with my second finger. And it's going to sound like this. And then I'm just ending on that same note. So what I'm doing again is all three together. I'll sequence up, change the chord, then back to the E minor chord, all three together. And then play the lowest note. And that's how I play the intro and the outro. 
For the next part of the song, where the verses and the choruses start, I find that I'm continuing to pluck the song, but what I'm doing is now I'm including the four string in the pluck as well. So I'm plucking one, two, and four together, then string three with my thumb, string two with my first finger, string four with my thumb, it's the E minor chord, so it's the same note, and then plucking the first string, then back down to the third string with my thumb, second string, first string, and then changing. Let's try that slowly. One and two and ready and go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. At about one minute and 20 seconds into the video, the song really kicks up a notch, not in terms of tempo, but in terms of volume and in terms of rhythmic complexity, as well as the instrumentation that comes in along with it. So that's the lyrics that say, written in stone, every rule, every word. So for that section, believe it or not, I think that a simple downstroke on every beat works really well. And that's what I would do there. Other than the outro, there's just one more strum that I find myself doing. I'm going to give you two options for it. One of those options would be the island strum, where Naomi Scott starts singing, I, I cannot start to crumble. And for the island strum, you would just simply change along with the music where it needs to change, following the pattern down, down, up, up, down, up. The other option that you could do is you could use a chuck. Now, if you want to learn how to chuck, that's a whole nother sequence and you need to give yourself some time to do it. But chucking is simply a palm mute where you're stopping the strings with your palm, but you're actually hitting the strings with your fingers at the same time. And you get a sound that's sort of like this. And you're actually brushing through the strings, down the strings, but stopping it with your hand. And there are lots and lots of videos out there on YouTube of how to do that. But that's another option you could have would be down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up. That would also add kind of that great extra energy for the rest of the song. So either that island strum of down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And actually the chuck, if you notice, pretty much has the same strokes, almost the same feel. But that would be down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up. I think that just about covers all the technical aspects that you might need to know about the song to successfully handle this play along. Now don't forget, you can always hit that little gear icon in the corner of the YouTube window to slow down a song and to preserve the pitch or to preserve it as much as possible. Again, thank you for watching the video. If you haven't, please subscribe and help out this channel. And as always, remember, ukulele, it's all about you.